everybody. Thanks for joining us. Today we're sitting down with Dr. Elton to get to know her a little better. So let's get the ball rolling. Let's get started. Okay, so we have a couple personal questions that we wanted to start with. Um, so first off, where were you born and raised? So I was actually born um, in the Kansas City area. I was born in Olathe, uh, raised in Olathe. Um, went through high school and finished high school in the Olathe area. So. Okay, and what about family life? Um, family life. I'm an only child, so um, I and my grand and my parents live in town. So um, they love to be around my children. I have two children, um, ages eight and eleven, and my parents really enjoy being grandparents and helping out with them. And do you have any hobbies outside of work that you like to do when you're not busy? You know, I used to have hobbies <laughs> and um, I had children, but now I'm, uh, I'm getting back into enjoying reading. I love being outside and biking with my kids. Um, I like rock climbing um, and I love to travel when I get the chance to do that too. And more about your home life, we hear that you have some fun pets at your house. Yeah, somehow I have a uh, mini zoo in my house and started out with just a dog like normal people named Howard the Beagle. He likes to steal my food. Um, and then we started adding reptiles. We had uh, two bearded dragons rehomed with us. Um, Rex and Spiky are their names. Then we had a third, Kevin joined us, so three bearded dragons. Um, once we had those reptiles, we heard people say, okay, I hear you adopt reptiles. And now I have a lovely 21-year-old tortoise named Bazooka. Um, have a snake named Cinnamon Toast Crunch. And um, three hermit crabs. Bruce Wayne, Shelly, and little Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about any fun personal facts that we probably don't know about you? Oh, personal facts that you don't know about me. I, I don't know, I hate to wear shoes. Whenever I'm around my house, I never wear shoes. Um, I wear shoes to the office, though, so no one has to worry about that. You have some impressive high heels, too, that we see. Yeah, but I like to go for <laughs> high heels or nothing. Um, I have some random talents too. Um, I can make really good bird noises. So I like to sit in my backyard and um, talk to the birds and see if they'll come to me. So um, let's see if I can hold up and showcase one. Here, try to get another one up. That's a cardinal. <laughs> it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Okay, now that we've heard the lovely bird calls, we wanted to bring it back to a more serious note. So, um, what made you go into the field of orthopedics? Well, um, my inspiration to go into medicine was my uncle. Um, my uncle um, was a World War II vet. Uh, he landed on Omaha Beach, and when he returned um, as an Army medic, he went into medical school, and he practiced um, family medicine in a small town in Kansas. So he was my inspiration to go into medicine. And where did you wind up going to your undergrad and then medical school? I left Kansas City and went to undergraduate in San Antonio, a small college, St. Mary's University. Had a great time there. Um, then I returned to Kansas City to uh, go to University of Kansas Medical School. Really enjoyed my training there. Um, then I continued back south on I-35 to Dallas to uh, do orthopedic training at the county hospital in Dallas, which was never boring. Um, and finally, I finished up with my hand and upper extremity training at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. So I feel like I have a nice balance between um, treating all different kinds of injuries and meeting all different kinds of people and love it. So going back a little bit further into the past, we were just wondering, were you one of the good kids in school or were you a naughty kid in school? You know, I think I found a good balance there. I always got good grades. Um, I did like to joke around and um, I like to do my work at the last moment, um, so I think the teachers still kind of liked me because I didn't do anything awful, I got good grades, but I did like to make things fun as I went along. And did that continue through medical school? or It did, um, it did, and I, um, again, did well in medical school, loved it, tried to make everything fun. Um, sometimes I try to make it too fun. Um, outside of the anatomy lab um, during a break I decided to do a cartwheel and as my hands were on the cement ground my foot knocked a sign down and it chopped the end of my small finger of my left hand off and so I got to walk with some friends to the emergency room and got a sneak peek into hand surgery and um, the, the neat outcome with that is I learned um, how painful 
hand injuries can be and um, tricks in pain control and minimizing things like that for patients. So it's not unusual for many of your patients to see Cameron or Abby when they come visit the office. So what does your mid-level provider do for you? Well, I think um, it's important that we all work very closely together, and we do. Um, I think we all share the same um, desire to really help patients be comfortable, have the outcome they want, and feel comfortable with the care that we all provide. So I kind of think them, of them as an extension of me. Um, we, uh, it, if they have any questions about something they're seeing with a patient, we'll talk about that. Um, oftentimes they're very helpful because when I'm in surgery and I can't see a patient, um, there's never a day where a patient is unable to come in and get something evaluated if they feel like they're having an emergency or need to be seen that day too. And what about your relationship outside of work with Abby and Cameron? Well, I consider them both very good friends. Um, we enjoy each other's company. We, um, all three of us have kids roughly the same age, so our kids love to play together. Um, so great people to work with and to play with. <laughs> and then do you have any favorite workplace quotes off the top of your head or things that have happened that you find yourself reminiscing about often? Yeah, I think I've worked with a lot of, um, a lot of great people and have a lot of their quotes staying in my mind. Um, one of them was, uh, don't ever do something to a patient, do something for your patients, which I think that's really neat. Um, and that's really stuck with me for, for my practice. Okay, so before we wrap it up, we thought that it would be nice to surprise you with a couple of things that your patients have said about you mm -hmm. before cool. moving into wrapping this up. <laughs> so um, this comes from one of your patients. Dr. Elton is not only proficient, but amazing, amazingly personable. Recommend 110%. She's very nice and takes the time to listen to your concerns. She's the only one I trust when it comes to the risk. Dr. Elton is very knowledgeable, skilled, and a great communicator, friendly and consultative in her approach. The office is also very efficiently run. Dr. Elton is a superb physician. Not only is she a very technically competent surgeon, she is a wonderful person who I look forward to seeing. She is extremely personable and a joy to visit with. She can delay her clinic, but that's the worst thing I could think to say about her. She's wonderful. So now that I think, yes, I do apologize. Often I'm running late. I'm sorry. Um, I, I am so thankful for those comments. That's how I want to be seen. Um, I want to take extra time with people when they need it. So I'm sorry when I'm late. All right, so before we wrap it up, we just wanted to see if there's anything that you would like to say to your patients. Um, well, I'd like to say thank you for letting me participate in your care. Um, I enjoy the opportunity to help people feel better, feel like they can do things better. Um, I'm always trying to get better at what I do too. And so please share um, when you're seeing me in the office, please share what I can do to help you more in the future too. All right, great. Well, thanks for sitting down with us today. Yeah, thank you. It's right. been entertaining. All right, and let's get back to work. Okay. <laughs>